Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and we're back for the weekly power rankings and the normal rankings as well. And we've just had the Madrid Open, a massive tournament for both the men and the women. And there's a lot of changes, not only to the power rankings, but also the normal rankings. Let's go start with the players who won last week because we only had two tournaments and some big, big winners. So starting with the Madrid Open for the women and Ons Jabor. She wins her biggest title of her career, winning against Pagula in three sets, 7-5, love 6-6-2, six, six, to lift the biggest trophy of her career. And Carlos Alcaraz finishes the week with the trophy in Madrid. Massive week for him again, beating Zverev in the final, 6-3, six, 6-1, six, and he is on an absolute roll at the moment. Let's start with the WTA ranking for this week and we've had a lot of changes as you'd expect but no change up the top Igor Fiontek, even though she didn't play in Madrid she's still at number one but Dossa she went down to number three allowing Krejcikova to go up to number two again even though Krejcikova didn't play in Madrid Zachary comes in at number four one spot higher than last week Contivate also goes up one spot as does Pliskova but on Jabor she goes to number seven in the world after winning in Madrid three spots higher than last week and like I said earning a lot of points from that victory and Sabalenka last year's Madrid Open champion she goes down four spots to number eight so she's dropped down the rankings fair bit failing to defend her title Collins also goes down one spot to number nine and Muguruza rounds out the top 10 one spot lower than last week having a look at the race to the finals and no change up the top Shiontek's still number one but on Shabor she's gone up to number two after that one victory and earning a thousand points so she's gone up 10 spots higher than last week to number two in the race to the finals pushing Bedosa down to number three and Pagula making the final of Madrid she's gone up seven spots higher to number four in the race to the finals pushing a lot of players down Zachary she goes down two spots spots to number five. Collins down to number six, two spots as well. Contivate down two spots to seven. And Keys goes down two spots to number eight. Simona Halep, she goes up one spot to number nine. And Bencic is holding on to that top 10 spot, but it's two spots lower than last week. Having a look at the ATP rankings, and there's a few changes to these rankings as well. With Djokovic at number one, Still ahead of Medvedev, who's at number two. We haven't seen Medvedev for a couple of weeks. That's why we haven't seen too much change up the top. Zverev comes in at number three. Rafa stays at four. City pass at five. But Alcaraz, he's gone up to number six after winning in Madrid. Three spots higher than last week. And of course, a career high for him. Rublev also gone up a spot to number seven. One spot higher than last week. Berrettini, after not playing in Madrid and losing a lot of points from the final he made last year, he's gone down two spots to number eight. FAA, he's gone one spot to number nine. And Kasper Ruud, he's gone down three spots to round out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race to the finals, and it's getting really close up the top there with Rafa staying at number one. But Alcaraz, he's jumped into the number two spot, pushing Pass down to number three. And he's only a couple of points away from Rafa. But of course, Alcaraz not playing in Rome this week. Rafa is, so that might change. Rublev, he's gone up two spots to number four, pushing Medvedev down one spot to number five. FAA's also gone up a spot to number six, pushing Fritz down number seven, which is two spots lower than last week. And Sasha Zverev, he's made his way into the top eight after making the final of Madrid. That's four spots higher than last week, pushing Kasper Ruud down to number nine. And Hubi Hercatch, he goes up one spot to number 10, rounding up the top 10 for the race of the finals. All right, now it's time to check out the power rankings. And there are some massive changes to the power rankings, as you'd expect after a big tournament like Madrid. Starting at number 20, and we have a new entrance with Pagula. Heading into the top of the power rankings for the first time ever. She's being rewarded after having a really good week in Madrid, making the final and beating some really good players along the way. Coming in number 19, Naomi Osaka. She's gone down five spots lower than last week. And I know a few weeks ago, people were questioning why she was so high in the power ranks. Well, having a bad loss against you know a lower ranked player in Tormo. So she's gone down five spots lower than last week. Coming in at number 18, we have another new debutante to the power rankings, Anissa Mova. She beat a couple of really good players along the way in Madrid, she gets into that top of the power rankings at number 18. Coming in at number 17, Taylor Fritz. Now, he's gone up two spots higher than last week, so it's not because he didn't he played very well. He actually didn't play in Madrid at all. But a lot of the players that are above him had poor weeks, so they've dropped down, and he's benefited from them. Coming in at number 16 is Ketchmanovic. He's gone down five spots lower than last week, so after a rocketing couple of weeks, he's just gone down the power rankings the last few weeks. He did lose to Rafa Nadal, so it's not like he had a bad loss, but... Still, a lot of players did a lot better than him, and that's why he got pushed down for the most part. Coming in number 15 is Maria Zachary. Now, she goes down six spots lower than last week after failing to make it past the second round. So, losing to Kazakina in that second round really cost her. She's gone down number 15 in the power ranks. 
Coming in at number 14 is Annette Contivate. She's gone down one spot lower now. She didn't play last week, and as a result of not playing, a lot of players did well last week and pushed her down, so she's gone down one spot. Daniel Medvedev, he comes in at 13. Same reason as Contivate. Didn't play last week, so he got pushed down because other players played well. Coming in at number 12 in the power rankings is Hubie Hercatch. He's gone up six spots higher than last week, trying to push towards that top 10 of the power ranks, and he might be able to do that. If he does play well in Rome next week, he made it all the way to the quarterfinals, beating Kina along the way, and then, of course, losing to Djokovic in the end, which is not a bad loss. So he's gone up six spots. Really, really good week for him. Coming in at number 11 is Paula Badosa. Now, she's gone down three spots lower than last week, and only a few weeks ago, she was number four in the power ranks. So she's really dropping down quickly in those power ranks. Of course, lost to Simona Halep in the second round. And that's not a bad loss because Halep, uh, you'll find out soon, is in the power rankings as well. But because she only made the second round, she didn't really add to any points. And so she dropped down. Other players did better than her and she was pushed out of the top 10. Speaking of Simona Halep, coming in at number 10 is Simona Halep. She's gone up 10 spots higher than last week. Of course, beating Badosa, Goff along the way, making the quarterfinals of Madrid really, really benefited her. So she's gone up 10 spots higher than last week. And of course, beating someone in the power rankings is always going to give you a massive boost. Coming in at number nine is Alexander Zverev. He's gone up six spots higher than last week's power rankings. Of course, making the final of Madrid, beating players like Oje Aliassime and Sidzi Pass along the way. And the Sidzi Pass win was a big, big win for him because, of course, Sidzi Pass has been in the power rankings for a while now. And beating someone in the power rankings will give you a massive boost. Coming in number eight is Belinda Bencic. She's gone down one spot lower than last week. She lost in the third round to the eventual champion, Jabor. So that's not a bad loss, but because she didn't do as well as other players, she got pushed down. Coming in number seven is Yannick Sinner. He's gone down one spot as well. Same reason to Bencic. Didn't have a bad week. He lost to Oji Aliassime in the third round, but again, other players did better than him, so he got pushed down. Coming in number six is Andre Rublev. He's gone down two spots lower than last week, and again, he made the quarterfinals, losing to Sidzi Pass in the end. So not a bad result, but of course, other players did much better than him. So again, he got pushed down as a result of that. Coming in at number five is Stefano Sidzipas. He doesn't move a spot. He stays at the same spot he was this time last week after making the semifinals of Madrid. So Sidzipas is a steady top five power rank player. And coming in at number four after her win in Madrid, Ons Jabor. She's gone up 10 spots higher than last week into number four, beating a lot of good players along the way. Of course, beat Bencic, Halep and Pagula in the finals. So some really big wins there. And if you do win a tournament, you are going to get benefited in the power rankings. We're starting to find that out, that the players that win tournaments get a massive boost. So she wins a big tournament and also beats a lot of good players along the way and fellow power rank players. So she gets a massive boost, goes up to number four. Now to the top three of the power ranks. And we actually have a change this week to the top three. Number three is Rafa Nadal. He's gone down one spot lower than last week because, of course, he lost in the quarterfinals, but it wasn't about where he lost. It's who he lost to. He lost to someone who's in the top of the power rankings. Speaking of, number two in the power rankings, Carlos Alcaraz. Of course, beating everybody to get the Madrid title. Beating Rafa, which helped him get over Rafa in these power ranks. He, of course, beat Djokovic as well. And Zverev in the final. Also beat Nori along the way as well, who's been featured in the power rankings over the last few weeks. So massive wins for Alcaraz. Very close to the top spot. And maybe if he plays well at the French Open and the person who's on top of the rankings doesn't play so well, he might take top spot by the end of the French. But the top spot, again, for the fifth consecutive week is Igor Sviantec. She didn't play last week, but that doesn't matter. She didn't actually lose to anybody last week, so she keeps her ranking. But she is playing in Rome. And by the start of the French Open with Alcaraz not playing next week, if Iga does have a bad loss next week, we could get a change at the top. So the rankings are very, very close up the top there. Rafa not too far behind Alcaraz, but Sviantec and Alcaraz battling for top spot. Who's going to be in the top of the power rankings by the French Open? A lot of pressure on Iga this week to maintain that top spot. There you have it, the power rankings and the normal rankings for another week. Massive changes in all of the rankings. Of course, the power rankings, now we're starting to figure it out a little bit. If you win a title or if you go on an amazing run and you beat a lot of good players, especially players that are also featured in the power ranks, you are going to get a massive boost. We've got Jabor, Alcarez, of course, winning last week. They got a boost. Zverev got a boost. Pagula made it into the top of the power ranks. But let me know down in the comments below, who are you most shocked about not seeing in the power ranks? We just still don't have Djokovic in the power ranks because he hasn't played that much. So compared to those 20 players in the top 20, hasn't played enough. But who knows? Maybe after Rome... You might be able to sneak in there, but let me know down in the comments below who are you shocked about being in the power ranks or maybe not being in the power ranks.